Howdy, my name is Marcus Hansen. I'm a first year PhD student at Texas A&M University, and today I'll be presenting this paper on anomaly detection and classification in a laser powder bed additive manufacturing process using a trained computer vision algorithm as part of a journal club presentation for my MSc in 660 class on unsupervised learning. The authors of this paper are Luke Shime and Jack Booth, sorry if I butchered the names, <laughs> and they're both from uh, Carnegie Mellon University and this journal or this paper was submitted to the Additive Manufacturing Journal. As an overview, the current laser powder bed fusion additive manufacturing processes, they have limited in situ monitoring and feedback. If something goes wrong during a build, it can be there might be no feedback to help uh, rectify any issues or um, monitor for build defects that you can't see after the build. And so this work aims to improve laser powder bed fusion added manufacturing by autonomously analyzing the powder bed images to detect anomalies, clustering those anomalies using unsupervised machine learning, then labeling the anomalies after clustering with supervised learning to classify which type of anomaly it is, and then predict locations of defects with poor build quality based on the anomalies that were detected in a build. The first step is to do some image pre-processing. You can see the image on the left is just the raw powder bed image. It's very dark. It has a bunch of extra information that isn't needed. So the authors uh, did some distortion correction with homography matrix, uh, cropping, background masking, and angled lighting to highlight the height differences, which help uh, improve the overall anomaly detection process. There are multiple different anomaly classes that can be detected for laser powder bed fusion. The key is that each anomaly needs to be uh, distinct from each other and be able to be identified visually. The table in the top right shows the list of anomalies, the six anomalies along with anomaly free uh, that are captured in this paper with the increasing severity as the table goes down where very severe anomalies can have detrimental part quality or complete build failures. The, to detect the anomalies, the powder bed is sub subdivided into smaller patches and then this anomaly detection can further be improved by combining with the uh, CAD information overlaid onto the powder bed image to determine what part based on the CAD and 3D model or feature had such an anomaly happen to it. The main anomalies are, or the anomalies in this are the recoder hopping, recoder streaking, debris, super elevation, part failure, and incomplete spreading, as shown in the images in the bottom right. To accomplish this goal, the authors use machine learning and a combination of unsupervised and supervised learning techniques. For the this presentation, I will be focusing on the unsupervised techniques. Uh, but I will still go over the supervised techniques as they are important to the final results of the paper. For the unsupervised learning, uh, k-means clustering and bag of words techniques were used, and then for supervised uh, learning used uh, ground truth labeling and then classification of the clusters after unsupervised learning and the visual words from bag of words into a dictionary to help match um, a fingerprint that is a cluster of words with a ground truth anomaly detection that was trained previously. And I'll go into this flowchart in the subsequent slides. So starting with unsupervised learning, the first the data was filtered using 37 different filters as uh, input data for clustering. These filters would just do stuff like uh, detecting blobs, detecting streaks, uh, just some basic visual features that can be used to uh, cluster around. And then the standard k-means unsupervised clustering algorithm was used to um, cluster basically the um, input or the output of the filters responses into uh, 100 different cluster groups and it was preferred uniform cluster spacing and there was a hundred uh, clustering iterations. Each cluster represents a visual word using the bag of words technique. 
the bag of words technique was originally used for uh, text extraction where you basically break up a document into a uh, string of words um, to basically say this document has th these words and then it kind of uses that to uh, compare to other documents to see how similar two documents are together based on their the contents of their words. Um, that's a very simplified explanation but the same process can be used to on images to create visual words that are basically subsets of an image that can help represent an image or parts of an image such as if you're looking at anomalies within that image in a powder bed image. These uh, visual words are then compiled into a dictionary and are the features that are searched for in future data sets. Next, the powder bed image is run through the filters again and then the filter response is uh, matched with the new dictionary of visual words. A uh, histogram of the word generated for each image patch is generated and this is called the uh, fingerprint where it's basically at each image patch you see which word is um, it's most similar to and then based on that you can determine what type of anomaly is in the next few steps uh, with the supervised learning where we classify each cluster with its ground truth anomaly. So in each of these fingerprints will uniquely identify an anomaly based on its frequency of words. And then this is put into a table of fingerprints which can then be referenced. So briefly talking about supervised learning, which I mentioned before, it's classifying the uh, patch, comparing it to the ground truth from training database, and then the top three fingerprint matches are used to classify each patch based on a weight. So if the top match says that it's recoder streaking but the next two say it's um, recoder uh, hopping or part failure it's just going to do recoder streaking because it's the highest also if the top one is says it's like part failure and the next two say that they're recoder hopping and they cumulatively add up more than the first one then it will be recoder hopping it's whichever it most identifies with uh, based on the accumulation of the words in the fingerprint. To measure the performance of this algorithm, two confusion matrices were generated with figure five showing how well the algorithm correctly identifies each type of anomaly based on ground truth labels with and then figure six showing how well the algorithm avoids false positives and kind of measures a uh, reliability of the algorithm to avoid incorrect predictions. Overall, both matrices show fairly accurate anomaly detection. However, there's definitely some uh, anomalies that are harder to detect, such as recoder streaking in Figure 5. It's only 50.6%, and it's only 65% in Figure 6. However, it is very good at detecting when there's no anomalies as well as uh, other anomalies such as recoder hopping, debris, and incomplete spreading. So for the results, this build was a bunch of tinsel bars and during the build you can see in the uh, powder bed image it labeled a large part of this horizontal tinsel bar with um, pink which is representing part failure and then after the build in this image on the far right you can see that there was indeed a part failure and this whole tinsel bar did not build correctly. Additionally there is a large amount of uh, debris represented by the white which is uh, detected from the uh, part failure being swept uh, downstream from the recoding direction. And so this was so a successful detection of anomalies that happened in a build. Another build that was uh, tested was this uh, vertical tinsel bar that had a part failure once the this lip right here started growing outwards. Um, on the powder bed image you can see there's recoder 
hopping from where it starts to hit that failed part and makes these uh, vertical grooves. There's quite a bit of uh, debris around it and then the failed part and just throughout this entire build there's various um, bits of detected debris and um, part failures from these tinsel bars that I guess did not build. And the image on the far right shows and confirms that um, tinsel bar that did fail quite spectacularly there uh, at just at this uh, lip where it did started detecting it with this overlay between the 3D image and the uh, part failure detection by layer. Lastly we have a uh, impeller that was built with uh, half the impeller kinda getting swept away not building correctly while the other half was relatively successful. Uh, on the right is a heat map showing the percentage of build layers with part failure and you can see the bottom of the impeller shows multiple uh, or high percentage of build layers with part failure up to 14 or so percent uh, which corresponds to these fins that failed on the finished part. Some key takeaways from this paper are that machine learning was successfully used to cluster and identify anomaly categories with high accuracy using both unsupervised learning for featured detection and clustering and then supervised learning for classification of the anomalies. This system is uh, material agnostic and can be used for uh, automated defect detection and laser powder bed fusion and additionally uh, showed post-build analysis with in-situ detection and along with potential for autonomous uh, anomaly mitigation. If it can detect an anomaly mid-build, there can potentially be countermeasures such as stopping a build and alerting a technician that there's something wrong with it or potentially even having a more autonomous um, anomaly mitigation if there was uh, too little powder that was detected it can maybe increase the dosing rate for some layers or something along those lines thank you very much for your time goodbye